All right, welcome to the show, everybody. We got a show for you. I'm Donald W. Moore. I started Get Off My Lawn Records with my beautiful wife. Say hello. Hello. Um, I also am a guitarist and a, I guess I'm a pianist. You're something. I'm, so, I'm a musician, right? <laughs> I play everything. Um, this week, this is episode 24 of the Get Off My Lawn Records podcast. I believe it's is season it really? two. Yeah, I believe it's season two, episode 11. Wow. Yeah, so if you're new, um, hit subscribe. We do this every week. I've been doing it almost six months now. Yep. We're up over 200 subscribers, which is great. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about that in our announcements, goals, and a giveaway. We do a giveaway in section four. Um, this week, so we're, this is section one, who the bleep are you? It's who the bleep I am, right? Mm-hmm. I make records. Uh, you are the one who handles our disc manufacturing. Yes. Um, we just got the best of Freeform Fridays going. Mm-hmm. Those are 10 bucks. Um, the easiest way to do that is send $13 via PayPal mm-hmm. to, uh, the Jazz Destroyer. So it's... PayPal.me slash the Jazz Destroyers. And just in the comments, just leave the address you want it sent to. Send $13 and I'll stick one in the mail for you. Uh, that's 10 bucks plus $3 shipping and handling. Because mm-hmm. it's like 250 to send them it's, off. I think it's a little more than that, but yeah. Uh, we're going to look into media mail for that, though. Maybe media mail will be cheaper. Mm, shipping maybe. S- shipping maybe. stuff. We'll, we'll is, look into that, definitely. Yeah, it's pretty it's pretty spendy. Um, so yeah, how's the uh, how's the disc manufacturing been going? It's been going. You know, we did start out with a few problems with the size of formatting. Right. But I think we've got those figured out now. Yeah, so. we got that worked out. And you know, it's a process. We're learning how to do it. Yes. The what's unique about us is that we make discs one at a time here. Right. We don't outsource it. Do a send off for a hundred of them, get a hundred back, and then I'm freaking out over how do I sell a hundred. Right. Right. We're I'm making, only freaking out over how do I sell ten. Yeah, we're making ten at a time. You know, I'm literally sitting out in the next room. Well, we make them one at a time, but yeah, we do we do some batch. Yeah. Just because it's a little more efficient. Um. So if you're interested in our giveaway in section four, it's hashtag disco hoodie. Just leave hashtag disco hoodie in the comments. Uh, Leave a comment. Let me know where you're watching from. That's always a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Uh, That's how we get to know Chris. We got to have Chris on a future episode. We do. Um, But this week, uh, so in our next section, we'll talk about uh, low pass filters, high pass filters, which Mm -hmm. we talked last week about how capacitors work. Mm Mm-hmm. And I was looking at your slides, and yeah, that's one way to do. That's a, I think the capacitor is creating a resonance cut off, a resonance off of that diagram you sent me. Yeah, it's. I because really a low a low pass filter is just resistance, but yeah, if you use a capacitor, you can create you can create resonance. Mm-hmm. Um, but the resistor also helps diffuse the resonance too. So. Yeah, yeah, that's how you get different different uh octaves like the uh it's decibels per octave is how they measure filters like that so a lot of filters will be 24 decibel per octave some are 12 the classic 303 is uh 18 which is odd and rare so that's section two section three we're going to teach everybody how to sound like they can play piano in five minutes oh boy you looked so interested while I was... I was exhausted yeah. while you were doing that one. It's uh, it's midnight on Saturday night. We should probably explain why it's midnight on Saturday night. It's because I just got a bunch of stuff going on. Mm-hmm. I just installed a hip shot onto Joe, my yes. baritone guitar. Um, and I'm getting ready to have a guy do all the wiring for that. Though, I don't know, I may... I still reserve the right to do it myself. You know, there's Mm -hmm. something to be said about doing it myself. There is, but there's also something to be said about having a professional do it and getting it finished. Yeah, though I got the hip shot on there. 
Yeah, but a hip shot's not like electrical wiring. Yeah, that's true. So uh, so that's section three. We're going to do ev- how to play piano in five minutes. Section four mm-hmm. is our announcements, our goals, and the giveaway. Mm-hmm. Section five is our shout-outs. If you want a shout-out next week, make sure to leave that in the comment. And we'll give you a shout-out. You know, if you got something you're promoting, I'd love to talk about it. Or if, you know, next week is your mother's birthday and you want us to shout her out. Yeah. We can do that, too. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and then section... Six, we're going to talk about why your friends are not your fans. The difference between a friend and a fan. Mm-hmm. And then section seven is always everybody gets a trophy. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> uh, <I hit> it. <laughs> we, uh, we, have a, we have our trophy uh, that we pass around. And it's just nice to recognize every, each other and... And what we're doing. Mm-hmm. I hear Studio Cat in the background. We got Regal Cat just off screen. We tried the cat cam, but then they weren't really interested in being on camera. And it just it makes the editing kind of a pain in the butt. So we're not doing the cat cam. But Regal Cat is being really, really funny right now. But she'll probably jump up in one of our laps here during the show. Probably. So welcome to the show, everybody. We got a show, right? We do. And uh, let's move on to our section two, Carissa Explains It All. Yes. And again, if you have a better name for this, please, by all means. Oh, I like the name. <laughs> you like the name. We even have a, lo- we have a thing, we have a thumbnail we put up. We got a, we Do got we a- know? Oh, yeah. We've had one since, like, the second one. <sighs> it's blue. It's nice. Greg did it. Okay. So, uh, yeah, so let's move, so let's do section two. So this is high pass and low pass filters. filters. Yes. So just so everybody knows, a high pass filter lets frequencies higher than a certain point through. Oh. How about I actually cover it? Okay. In the thing, because I thought you looked at it and I thought you realized that I covered it in the presentation. Fair enough. Would you like me to change the slide? Yes, please. So, so we're streaming this to Instagram. I'm not sure. I, I've got the I, the the, ca- the front facing camera is kind of awful. The rear camera on the iPhone is very nice. So I can't see if anybody's watching. But if you're watching from Instagram, uh, be sure that you're subscribing on YouTube. It's Get Off My Lawn Records. And uh, but let's let's go on to the next slide here. Let's take a look. So high pass filter. High pass filters. With a typo. Look at that. What are you talking about? You forgot to capitalize the A in an. Hey, you know what, proofreader? <laughs> if you noticed that the first time, you should have corrected it. I should have. I just glanced at these. All right. Yeah, uh huh. So, what's a high pass filter? <laughs> A high-pass filter is an electronic filter that passes signals with a frequency higher than a specific cutoff frequency and attenuates signals with frequencies lower than the cutoff frequency. Attenuates a little... It it doesn't let them through at all. It kind of depends on the filter, but yeah, for the most part, the whole point is to not let it through. Right, so if your cutoff is 200 hertz, everything over 200 is going to get through, but everything under 200 is going to be cut off. Right. And then, like, 180 will get through, but it'll be quiet. That's where the mm-hmm. attenuation comes from. Yeah, it's it's a curve more than, like, a straight drop-off for the most part. Right. And this is for all of the synth guys, because a lot of my friends from synth memes, you know, shout out to the synth memes guys. Uh, this, is, this is really for them. So, yeah. yeah, so it depends on the filter design as to where the, where, what the curve looks like and how much it rolls. Right. Off. Okay. Right. So this is a passive filter you're showing? Right. First order? Yeah. Okay. Which I think is a either a 6 or a 12 decibel first order. 12 decibel per octave, I think. Yeah, every, everything I've found have said, has said that it kind of depends on, like, the materials used and whatnot, so. It's true. The, the kind of capacitors and resistors you use will have an impact. Yeah. So, so on the schematic here on the screen, you have your, that's the positive on the V, right? So it comes through, hits a capacitor, and then you're bridging mm-hmm. the, the negative side with a resistor. 
Actually, I think that's backwards. Yeah, I think, it's backwards. Voltage I think you put, in is the negative side. Yeah, okay. So that's the negative. And then the lower, the lower line is your positive signal. And so you're letting some of the positive pass over to the negative side. That's what creates that, that high pass. Cool. Yeah. All right, let's go on to the next slide. All right. And then, yeah, that, that looks like an active filter because that's, uh, that's an amplifier there, that triangle in the schematic, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, that is an oper operational amplifier attached to a ground. Yep. So, yeah. Yeah, these are rumble filters. Um, that's where they're really handy. But also, uh, with high-pass filters, they're cutoffs. They're you, cutoffs. Or yeah. uh, they're... they're uh, sorry, it's midnight and I'm tired. Uh, for speakers. Yeah, it's that's a, what it says there. It's a hot, <laughs> yeah. Where? Where does the yeah. word speaker... Uh, oh, to a tweeter. The tweeter's the little tiny guy yes. on a speaker. The one, the one that handles the higher frequencies. Right. And the woofer is the one that handles the low. Right. So, yeah. So, that's a, what we're seeing here. It does the same thing. It comes across the negative. You do the resistor, just like we saw. And then you get a positive is hitting an amplifier or is going to the ground. Got it. Right. Cool. Let's okay. move on. So, a low-pass filter. Oh, oh, look at that. You throw a... You throw a resistor on the line, and that's it. Yep. And the capacitor's creating your resonance, I believe. Uh, the capacitor is taking the higher frequencies, is what it's taking. That's not true. It's not true, because if you put a big resistor on a line, you just it, it low passes. Like, if you, take a, if you take a resistor and you put it on a speaker line, it'll just low pass. The capacitor is doing something. I'm just not sure what it's yeah, doing Yeah, it, basically the, the faster frequencies are they're getting... They're going to get cut off by the... Th resistance. Yeah, they're going, they're going to the capacitor is what they're going to, and then, which is just going to a ground. Whereas the lower ones aren't making it to the capacitor, and that's how they're coming through. The lower ones make it all the way through to the capacitor. No. The lower ones come out. Gotcha. Okay. You know, I built one of these in college. You can build them with Radio Shack parts. Sure. Yeah. Uh, you, can, you can build just about anything with Radio Shack parts. That's the brilliance of Radio Shack parts. <laughs> yep. Don't talk right into the microphone. So... And here, I thought you wanted me to talk right into the microphone. I just want you to speak up. All right, so applications of low-pass filters. Subwoofer crossover, sure. Radio transmitter, yeah, mm -hmm. all right. Guitar tone knob is definitely a low-pass filter, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, and the one I was I never knew was the radio receivers and television sets because those are those are lower frequencies. Those are lo those are larger wavelengths. They are. So they are. That, yeah. I found that rather fascinating. Yeah, that's – so the schematics here, that's uh, – yep, that's what they're doing. Yep. All right. So that's how a high-pass – that's what, how a high-pass and low-pass filter work, at least on an electronic level, right? Mm -hmm. um, it should be noted that your filter cutoff is a potentiometer that applies a, a change in resistance. And that's how you set your cutoff frequency sure. is, is the amount of resistance you put on there. The capacitance at values. At, le at least in musical applications. Yeah. Well, in general. It's just how you... Okay. <laughs> so, So yeah. So, that's how that goes. Um, if there's anything you want explained on Carissa Explains It All, let us know in the comments. Yes. And share this with a friend. That's the most... Um, helping other people find out about what we're up to is really the most helpful thing you can do mm -hmm. to support what we're doing if you can't buy the records. Not everybody's got 10 bucks. Right. So uh, let's move on to our section three, mm -hmm. which is which was recorded earlier downstairs. Yes. Um, could you see the painting? Do I have to? No, no. You, you, you can see like the very bottom edge of it. So. Yeah, that's a nude. So I didn't, ha I had to, wor I was worried about whether I had to. Uh... 
Yeah. Then and from Blur what or anything. From what I could see in the screen, you could literally see like the bottom edge of it, and that was it. So. Yeah. So I'm gonna teach you guys how to play piano in five minutes, and at least sound like you can play piano. If you're at a party, there's a piano. You can sit down and just kind of create ambient filler noise that's pleasant. That's yes. That's really what that is. So let's take a look at that. All right. So we're going to teach you how to play the piano in five minutes or less, or at least sound like you can generally play the piano, you know, passing the offering plate around. So here's how you do it. If, you, if you're new to this, if you're finding this for the first time, hit subscribe. We do a whole bunch of different musical content, how to make music, all that. And if you're watching on the full show, let's we'll get back to the full show here in section four. But let's show you how to play piano. A lot of guys, they'll tell you, just play all the white keys and you're fine. The problem, the problem with that is you got these two notes next to each other. sound terrible when played right next to each other. You gotta put them in context. Then they sound okay. But the easier way to do this is move your hand up, all the black keys. There is no wrong note when you're playing all the black keys. Sounds great, right? It gets boring after a while. And don't just lean on the sustain pedal. When you hit a chord, sustain on. Then when you hit the next chord, you gotta take sustain off. It's off, put it back on, and it keeps holding. Off, on, off, on, on. So those work. If you're sitting at your piano and you're using your sustain, it's just going to sound like that. It gets boring. It's kind of vanilla. So how do we add a little color to this? Well, those two notes I was telling you about on the white keys, there's actually two sets of them. Sounds awful when you do that, right? But if you pick one of those out of each pair, I like to do the ones on the right. So you get these pa this pair. I like doing this one. That's C, if anybody's curious. And then, out of this pair, I like to do F. This one's E, this one's F. So if you combine C, ah, C and F, then you've got yourself a sound. When you add those to the black keys, sound like you generally play piano. 
The trick is really kind of in the left hand. Um, you want to keep... When you have your pair of two, the one to the right, this one's called E flat. And we're back. So that's how to play piano. In a nutshell, right? Mm -hmm. The sustain pedal is helpful. So let's move on to our section four, which is our announcements, our goals, and a giveaway. So part of the reason that we've been so, that we're doing this so late on a Saturday night is we've, I've just been going 100 miles an hour all week. Mm -hmm. uh, tomorrow I will be in Round Top, Texas. Yes. Which is about an hour and a half out of Houston, about an hour from here. Um, there's a big antique show. We're doing a brunch with a duo with Josh Peters. It's going to be a lot of fun, a lot of standards, um, and a lot of reading, which is good <laughs> for me. Uh, so we're doing that. Uh, the other big announcement is the Jazz Destroyers Live. Uh, those are about to have CDs made. Yes. That'll, I don't think we're getting it done tonight, but let's try to get those done for next week, and I'll bring mm -hmm. them. I've got. Uh, I'm playing an old folks home next week. That's a private event. Okay. Uh, but then on the 31st, I'll be at Mozart's doing a solo thing. Mm -hmm. So you'll be able to find the download cards. They're five bucks, uh, and the CDs are ten. So you can you can pick one of those up from me at the gig. Um, and Jumbo and the Possum Posse, they've got they've got download cards and they've got they've got a couple copies of Freeform Fridays as well. Okay. So if you go see Jomo and the Possum Posse, you can totally pick up some Jazz Destroyer stuff. Um, a after that, we're going to get It's a Secret to Nobody. We'll do a, a very limited run of those. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many people want to buy CDs of my electronic stuff, but, you know, it's a, it's nice to have a couple floating around. Yeah. And then I got to work on Sounds in Between. We recorded them, what, two weekends ago? Yeah, beginning of the month. At the beginning of the month, that's right. And we're going to, we're going to, I got to mix that. Mm -hmm. And then I got to start editing video. And I'm going to have, uh, I think, Engen do the design on it. So I'll, okay. I'll specify it and I'll, I'll let him know, don't be, don't go right to the, like, go to the edges, but don't put anything super important on the edges. Mm -hmm. And I'll let him do his layout for that. Um, that's a re that that record's great. The my favorite on that one's called Seven is the New Four, mm -hmm. which for a musician it's a tune in seven eight, and most dance music's in four four, but Turkish dance music's in seven, mm -hmm. and it's really happening. It's just a good record. Um, Two thousand six and beyond, you can totally check out right here on our YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. You just go to the main channel and. Uh, on the playlists, there will be – it's right there. I made that in college. Very relaxing. And Jesse Thunderwake, I'll get around to it. I'm just not there yet. But eventually I'll – we're going to do a series of DVDs for the film. Oh, okay. I've got some commentaries I need to figure out how to – like we've recorded two commentaries over the years. Mm -hmm. We recorded a commentary – right after we made the film. Mm -hmm. And then we recorded another before Greg left. Yeah. And so I need to figure out, I don't really know how to do that stuff, so I need to learn how to do that and put that together. I know Greg's got some behind the scenes footage he'll want to put together mm -hmm. for that. And then we'll make DVDs of that. We'll put it out through here. Um, we talked about Eats the Secret to Nobody and Jazz Destroyers Live. You know, the Jazz Destroyers Live is already on iTunes and Amazon. I think it's even on Spotify as much as I hate Spotify. So go check it out, you know. Mm -hmm. And there's all the – honestly, all of the tunes are on YouTube. Yeah. They're all on YouTube. Uh, you just go to the Jazz Destroyers channel and check them out. Um, I'm wearing a – what is it, a blue suit? Mm-hmm. So the videos with me wearing a blue suit. And th that one, all of those videos – the the album is not all of them. We did a lot of covers that night, and those di those aren't going on the album. Uh, one of my personal favorites on that is Enter Sandman. That mm -hmm. one came out really nice. And 
and yeah, you can check you can check that out. It'd be under the originals for the Jazz Destroyers Live. Plus, we did when Johnny comes marching home. Hmm. Um, Escape from ignorance. Stephen was supposed to be on this episode, but he's not feeling well, so we wish him a speedy recovery. Yes. Millicent Hughes should just be just about be done with the charts for her album. We're gonna record that in May. Mm-hmm. And on Thursday, I recorded Jomo and the Possum Posse again. Yes. Uh, my back is still sore. It's rough. You got to drag. I drug out five cameras plus Brenda brought her Nikon. So that's six. Cam- we shot that with six cameras. Mm-hmm. We get a multi-track out of that board. And it came out great. It was a good show. They put on a heck of a live show. Um, so, yeah, those are our announcements. Uh, let's talk about our goals. Okay. Our goals, we've already sold 12 copies of Freeform Fridays. Yes. Uh, the big goal is getting all of the musicians. It took 21 people to make that album. And I, everybody's got to get a copy. So we got to... We got to keep putting them together. Mm-hmm. I know Ben's got his copy. Josh is getting his copy tomorrow. I got my copy. My mom, who did the design, she or I guess we sold eleven, and I sent one extra to my mother. She did the she did the design for the. I thought we sold ten, and we sold, sent one to your mother. I sold one yesterday. Oh, okay. Um, and that that helps us get past our recoup point, right? Because mm-hmm. I had to pay for the UPC code and stuff. So that'll come to iTunes, Amazon, blah blah blah, pretty soon. I've got it all queued up. I just need to, I just need to drop the artwork on and hit publish. Um, and our other goal, I'm looking to find a punk band. I'd like to have a punk band on the album. On the label. Yeah, on, on the label. Um, so if anybody knows any good punk bands in Austin that would want to get involved do this collectivizing of our audiences that we do. Mm-hmm. I really want one of each genre, right? Yeah. So I'm looking for a punk band. I've got my country band, got my jazz, got my world. Uh, MC Overlord, I don't know what's going on with him these days, actually. I got to ping him. He's been recording with somebody else, and I'm really, I'm really not down to do, like, an also album. Mm-hmm. You know, like... I need a little bit of exclusivity just to make this stuff valuable. So I don't know what he's doing. Uh, I'll talk to Sterling. Sterling's a very good rapper. But if somebody knows a really good rapper who's gigging, that's the important part. I'm looking for gigging bands. I don't have a metal band. I don't have a hard rock band. I don't have a classical, like, quartet. I should talk to Charles, see if they want to do something. But that's uh, that's kind of what we do. Uh, it's kind of one of each is what we're doing. So, if you know of anything that's really interesting and you want you want us to work with them, let me know. And also, uh, our new goal is a thousand subscribers. Thousand. I know it's a lofty goal. We're working at it. We're at two oh nine right now as as of filming. So I'm going to say I thought last week it was over at 300, but <laughs> well, <was> the goal. <laughs> well, what I found out is YouTube will let me live stream from the phone. We're live streaming this to Instagram, mm-hmm. but I can't live stream to YouTube until I've got a thousand subscribers. So if you've got multiple accounts, please take the time and subscribe on all the accounts um, and help a friend subscribe. Yeah, that that helps a lot. And. And then, yeah, we'll start, once we hit our 1,000 subscribers, we'll start doing some live streaming. I'll do, I'll probably do some midweek live streaming as well, like while I'm working on albums and stuff, let everybody mm-hmm. hear it in process. Okay. That would be kind of an interesting thing to do, like mix while streaming. Mm-hmm. And then everybody can understand how annoying that process is. <laughs> Though analog is much easier. Um, so th- those are really, that's our big goal. Mm-hmm. And I would like to sell some more records this week. So if anybody wants to buy some records, hit me up. I'll, I ship them. Uh, they make great stocking stuffers. I know there's Father's Day coming up. If you got a father who's into jazz, let me know. Mother, I've got Mother's Day is coming up. Mother's Day, same thing. 
Uh, these records are really good for that sort of thing. It's really... I, ca- I make jazz for people that don't like jazz. They're, they're also excellent for Easter baskets. Yeah, <laughs> Easter baskets. Absolutely. Um, and so let's get on to our giveaway. We've giveaway. got our giveaway. We've got our download card, uh, number 29. You've got it set aside over there. Yep, number 29. Number 29 of 100. This is a download of the Jazz Destroyers Live. Uh, you're going to leave a comment, hashtag disco hoodie. I'll pick the best comment, and we'll figure it out. I'll, I'll probably have you either email me through getoffmylawnrecords.com or get in touch through Facebook. You get me the address, I'll, stu- I'll shove it in an envelope with a sticker. Everybody gets stickers. And I don't know where my stickers are. I don't know. What did you do with your They're around. I got, hun- I got literally hundreds of them. Yeah, there's still a bag full of them somewhere. Oh, oh yeah. There they are over by the amps. <laughs> and everybody that buys a, a copy gets a sticker. Yes. I stick a sticker in each copy. So so leave a comment, hashtag Disco Hoodie. So that's our announcements, our goals, and our giveaway. Yep. And if you're if you're watching the clip, uh, be sure, to, be sure to, to check out the other videos. We do a lot of different things. Um... I do some synthesizer stuff. I do some music stuff, but this is really more talk show. What's going on? But we mm-hmm. do put up some content. Oh, you know what? I forgot to talk about our Paul Serato project. You did. So we cut three with Paul while he was here. Um, one of them didn't quite make the cut, but then the other both were excellent. So we're gonna have alternate cuts. We'll have an alternate take of one of them. Okay. And to fill it out, we did a session of Freeform Fridays with Paul. Mm-hmm. So I'll probably take some of those and move those over to the Paul album. Okay. And that will be kind of a commemoration of Paul Serato visiting us here in Austin. Yes. So that'll be a lot of fun. All right. So moving on, uh, what's next? Shout Section outs. five, our shout outs. Shout outs. So uh, why don't you do your three? All right. So, first shout out would be Chuck Berry. Yeah, we just just found out today. Yep. 90 years old. 90. I wish he was immortal. Yeah. But his music lives on. Chuck Berry was really fortunate to live in an era where recorded music was a thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just watched this interesting documentary about what people sounded like in the Victorian era. era. Okay. Which was the very earliest sound recordings. Apparently a bunch of prisoners of war of World War One were coerced into speaking mm-hmm. and being recorded. And then a bunch of linguists or phoneticists or, I don't know, one of these oddball PhDs that I don't <laughs> know about, uh, they were studying the accents of these different areas of, of Britain. Mm-hmm. So... So Chuck Berry will live on forever because he was recorded. I mean, the guy invented a whole genre of music with rock and roll. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. All right. Who's your number two? Number two would actually be my father-in-law, who just celebrated a birthday this past week. That's right. Happy birthday, Dad. I I pinged him. I, I said happy birthday, but I'm just... (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it's been a busy, busy week. It was Thursday. That was like an 18-hour day for me. Yeah. I I worked the day job all day. I came home. I, I rinsed off, and then I had to drive an hour through South by Southwest traffic to get to South Austin to set up cameras and do that. I got home about 1230, and it was brutal. But mm-hmm. it was a good show, and we captured it. So that's really cool. So, yeah, happy birthday, Dad. Who's number three? Number three. It's actually going to be my pillow that I would really like to get back to soon. Yeah. Yeah, you're going straight to bed after this. It is late and I am tired. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, My first shout-out is to a guy who I know isn't watching. Of course. His name is John Shannon. And... I posted a spoiler for Logan because it was such a good practical joke. It was very, very funny. It was a funny meme. It was uh, a very I would, I would funny give you meme. That. And I caught a whole lot of flack on Facebook for posting it. 
But I got to a point where I caught by the fourth person that was griping at me. I was like, all right, that's it. I'm going to post a bunch of movie spoilers. I'm going to flood everybody's timeline with movie spoilers. So, you know, it's like Rosebud is the sled, that sort of thing. I didn't, the only, Logan was the only one in theaters that I had spoiled, but it was only because that meme was so funny. But John had subscribed to this channel, but he wasn't watching the videos. And he was so mad at me because I was like, listen, I will stop posting spoilers if somebody will go buy a record. Mm Mm-hmm. And and he was like, that's it, I'm unsubscribing. And I'm like, all right, that's fine. You weren't watching, you weren't commenting. You know, just hitting like is not supporting. Yeah. You know, it's, don't try lording your like or your subscription over me. I am really only interested in having fans that are interested in what we're doing, not people that are clicking it to click it. Mm-hmm. So... Shout out to John, because I was I was in a bad mood, which makes me particularly unpleasant, uh, especially online. Yeah, we'll, we'll go with that term. <laughs> so that's my first one. My second shout out is to Cody. Yeah. Cody's the reason I stopped posting the, the spoilers. It was upsetting him. He's the only one who I, I would stop for. Uh, yeah, Cody, you, you wouldn't even stop for me. So. No. <laughs> Cody's been having a pretty rough week, so hopefully next week's a better week for Cody. Yeah. So, shout out to Cody, because Cody deserves a shout out. And then finally, my third shout out's always to the entire Get Off My Lawn Records family. You can join the family, uh, which includes all of the musicians on the label uh, and all of our supporters. Um, That's a Facebook group. It's called Get Off My Lawn Records Family. Uh, I don't post a lot there because everybody gets a notification. I really only post when it's important. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's kind of how you join our street team and and really support us is you check that out. And then when we're we're doing a push for subscribers, you go help uh, find a friend to help subscribe and help help push it up. All right. So those are our shout outs. Let's move on to section six. Speaking of my... Yes. My particularly bad mood on Facebook. I have had it with so-called Facebook friends who aren't supporting the art. They're coming what? For the memes? Great. Great. Thanks. Right? We're getting a label off the ground here. And there's a lot of people on Facebook. Facebook friends are kind of like Pokemon. (laughs) You know, it's like, are they really your friend? Nah. Your friends support your efforts. Your friends click like. Thanks. So going through this, it, it reminded me of a of a of a project I had done a long time ago and then dropped them. It was actually the project I started Get Off My Lawn Records to do. Mm-hmm. And I we had done we had finished the single. I had done a preliminary mix with it and they showed it to their friends and their friends thought it was goofy and they were kind of poking fun at them. And I had to remind them, your friends are not your fans. Yeah. The the people that are watching right now, some of them are my friends and thank you for watching. It's great. And some of Mm -hmm. them are fans that I've become friends with, which Mm -hmm. is very cool. I love meeting new people. Yes. I'm friends with anybody that'll be my friend. Right? Mm-hmm. But with the fans, it takes a level of, for lack of a better word, mystery. Right? I'm a hotshot guitarist that, if you don't know anything about me, the playing's even more impressive. Your friends know you as, as goofy, goofy you who likes whatever weird, dorky thing that you We all have some weird thing mm-hmm. that we like that is, that's everybody around us would make fun of us for. And that just, it humanizes you, and thus you're no longer a rock star. Yeah. So you're, f- be friends with your friends, and the ones that want to support it, be thankful for them, mm-hmm. right? Those are real friends. But ultimately, your fans are people that know you through your art, mm-hmm. and they know a side of you that your friends just will never appreciate. And to me, it's actually a more... 
it's an honest side of you. Something comes out with the art that, you know, posting your political thoughts on Facebook just doesn't mm-hmm. get across, right? Like, the Freeform Fridays stuff we do with the Jazz Destroyers, which if you're if you're watching this and you're not subscribed to the Jazz Destroyers, go subscribe to the Jazz Destroyers because we've got, like, 40 more subscribers here now. So please, please go check out the Jazz Destroyers stuff. Um, that's really my art is Freeform Fridays. Mm-hmm. And and with that, there's a lot of there's a lot of people in my world that don't get it. They don't want to get it. They have no interest in getting it. Sure. And but they want to be friends with me, and that's great. I'm ha- I will be friends with anybody that will be my friend. I'm an inclusive kind of guy. Yep. There's a cer- there's a certain few exceptions. You screw me over once. I will never talk to you again. That's how that goes. And otherwise, I'm just, yeah, you want to be my friend? Sure. You know, I'm not. I have I have so many friends that it's hard to keep up with everybody. And yeah. if I'm failing at keeping up with you, reach out to me, right? I, it sucks trying to, trying to remember to reach out to everybody. And I've, especially now where I'm working three jobs between the day job, the band, and this, it's, it's just hard, but but your friends, they're they're not going to come to your shows much. Maybe in the early stages, mm-hmm. but if you're a musician, your primary goal needs to be reaching a new audience that doesn't know who you are, and doesn't know that you played D and D in high school or whatever dorky thing. I'm using that reference for Airheads, right? Uh huh. <clears throat> if especially if you have a stage name, if you're using a stage name. Your friends are going to think you're super goofy. Mm-hmm. And they're gonna, they're not going to get it. And the hardest part is building the fans that aren't your friends. Yeah. But if you can find those friends that really want to support what you're doing, have them show people who don't know you. Mm-hmm. That's where it starts. Friends of friends. And ultimately, if you make good art, art that people want to share, it will grow. Yeah. But don't do it for do it for the art's sake and then spend the energy afterwards figuring out how to grow the fan base. Don't mm-hmm. think about the fans, don't think about fame, don't think about those things while you're making it. Don't think about money while you're making it, just mm-hmm. make it. And that's really the only way you're going to make effective art that will work. That will help you actually build fans. Yeah. The other thing with fans is you have to be responsive to your fans to an extent in that when you leave a comment, uh, you'll probably see that I reply to comments. Mm -hmm. We don't get enough comments where I can no longer reply to every comment. Mm -hmm. I try. I read every comment that we get and I'm thankful for every single one of them. And. I'm glad I'm I'm lucky in that I'm still at that place. Mm-hmm. You know, like Jomo and the Possum Posse, they I know they read all their comments too. And it's tough when you get people that are nasty and rude and all that, but ultimately you gotta remember about negativity bias. Mm-hmm. How about you explain that one next episode? Negativity bias? Okay. Yeah. So I'm next week on Carissa that. Explains It All, it. <laughs> we'll have Carissa explain negativity bias. But ultimately, you need to find a way to reach people that don't know who you are. And I found a lot of luck on Facebook groups that I'm – communities that I'm a part of, but my friends don't share. Synth memes, right? I've got like maybe two, three friends. Mm-hmm. That are I get maybe four friends that are also part of synth memes, and those guys seem to love my electronic stuff. We got it's it's a secret it's a secret to nobody. I just put out pretentious upgrade on this channel on the videos. Um, I'll put that in. I don't know. Maybe I'll put that whole whole record up on a playlist. Cause it's uh if you go onto Bandcamp, get off my lawn records at Bandcamp dot com. That record is functionally free it's pay what you want including zero so you can check that out but 
those guys seem to really appreciate the fact that I'm making electronic music, and they like the kind of electronic music I'm making. Same with uh, with this one I've been losing my mind trying to work on, the uh, We Are Living in the Age of Neo-Feudalism. Mm-hmm. I got tape one done. I put that I put that video up on this channel. I think it's on the special episodes playlist. And they all seem to really dig it, mm-hmm. which is great. And they don't know I'm goofy. Because I'm pretty goofy. Yeah, I was going to say, just by looking at you, you can kind of tell you're goofy. Yeah. And you got to quit mumbling. Sorry. And don't breathe right onto the mic. So, so your friends are not your fans. And sometimes your wife isn't either. Yeah, your family is probably supportive, but they're probably the least likely to understand what you're doing. Right? It's, yeah. It's so- a, there's a reason that these festivals and things get away with, with the argument of you're doing it for exposure. Mm-hmm. It's to build a fan base. There's other ways to do it, though, rather than paying 20 bucks to get rejected. Sure. So figure out how to, if you're making music, you have to figure out a way to put your music in front of people that don't know you. Mm-hmm. And you, and it's a shot, it's, it's like, it's like hunting with a shotgun, right? You're not going to, every single person that you show it to is not going to like it. You know, it'll be a subset of that. But you're hoping if you get if you show it to 100 people and 10 people are fans because of it, that was worth it. Mm-hmm. If you show it to 100 people and one person becomes a fan be- because of it, that was worth it. You do it for you do it for the fans that you do have. Mm-hmm. And there's the thousand true fan theory that's so very common. You know, if you keep at it, you can build up to your thousand fans. So. And that's a lot of what we're doing with the label, right, Mm -hmm. is the people that are subscribed to Joma and the Possum Posse, very little overlap with who are subscribed to us. Mm -hmm. People that are subscribed to us, there's certainly a subset that are not subscribed to the Jazz Destroyers. Yeah. But maybe they'll dig Sounds in Between, and maybe the people that dig Sounds in Between will dig what we're doing as a label. Mm Mm-hmm. Because I do try to conduct business in a very unique way in that I'm not – it's definitely not shyster. No, it's all I'm, In it's many all ways, I'm financially shooting myself in the foot. Sure. You know, a lot of indie labels still do a 50-50 split with the band mm-hmm. where the label gets half and the band gets half. I don't do that. I take a cut as a member of the band. Mm-hmm. So if there's five guys in the band, I'm only getting 20 per- – If you know, if it's four guys and me – it's 20%. If it's nine guys and me, I get 10%, not 50. Mm-hmm. Right? But I do it because I think that's the most fair way to do it. They're playing the whole time. I'm recording the whole time. They got to go play a bunch of shows to sell the records, and I put in the time to mix and master and do the video. Mm-hmm. So it seems like a fair trade to me. I think asking, I think taking more than that is wrong, but everybody's going to conduct business how they see fit. So, so your friends are not your fans. Your fans can become your friends. Mm -hmm. I am so glad I've made a couple of friends with, with fans. I've met some really interesting people because of this podcast and because of the label. So, so just keep that in mind and don't feel weird about people that that are upset over you pushing your stuff on social media. If they're upset that you're pushing your stuff on social media, screw them. Unfriend them. There's just... Like, my friend Eugene, he calls his Facebook friends list. Does he? He keeps it at 150. Wow. When he gets up over 150, he starts cutting it back down to 150. Because you can really only maintain relationships with about 100 people. It's hard to to stay in contact with more than that, as I find out. I don't even know what my list is at anymore. You're at about 150, so... Am I really? Yeah. Am I really up to 150? I don't know that you're up to 150. (laughs) You're sub-150, though. Um, Let me know how many friends you have on social media. That's that's interesting. Some people collect friends like Pokemon. 
and some are a lot pickier. So let me know roughly how many friends you have on Facebook. And I know you got Facebook. Almost everybody's got it these days. And uh, if you're watching on Instagram, thanks for checking this stuff out. This is why I'm streaming on Instagram is because there is certainly a subset on Instagram that are checking out all the stuff I'm doing. And I get about 50 people that seem to like everything I post, which is awesome. Thank you. Uh, but they don't know who I am, really. Yeah. I'm just a guy who posts pictures. I'm a musician. They know I'm a musician. Uh, but I don't post a lot of sound stuff on Instagram. And that's, as a musician, that's kind of odd. You post a lot of cat pictures. Well, Regal Cat is cute. Regal Cat's adorable. And so is Studio Cat. Yeah, that's you go to you go to the Jazz Destroyers Instagram for cat pictures, for sure. And it's an audience that I think would like this podcast a lot. That's why I'm I'm doing this experiment. Okay. So So let's move on to our section 7. Yes. Uh this is everybody gets a trophy. So the first trophy I want to give is you for the energy award. <laughs> I know you took a couple naps today. Yeah. But you pull it you pulled it out and you were really super helpful in setting up tonight. Yes. Which is not always the case, but this week you were definitely awesome. No, I needed that nap right before this. I was I was like, no, I'm I'm pumpkin bound if I don't, so Yeah, so so thank you for digging down and finding the energy to help make this happen this week. And I would like to give you the, uh, how do I phrase this? Quit mumbling. I'd like to give you the patience award for being understanding of me needing the naps. <laughs> yeah, I get it. And, you know, not freaking out on me like you sometimes do when you think stuff needs to be done and I need to sleep. I get it. By the way, uh, starting in April, there's going to be some big changes to this podcast. So, Yeah. Yeah, so, there will be. So hang around for that because that's going to get weird. But in a good way. Uh, and then I want to give everybody in the audience the Hanging In There Award. Granted, this is possibly the shortest show we've ever done. This show will clock in at about 50 minutes. It'll go up tomorrow on, uh, if you're watching on Instagram, it'll go up tomorrow on YouTube. And then throughout the week, I post clips. I, I was a little, I slacked off this week on posting the clips, but I had a busy week. Yeah, he did. And, and Kyle was great, but nobody seemed that interested in that episode. So taking the time to post those. Maybe I'll post those, those episodes later. Mm -hmm. Or I've got two parts of that interview. So I just didn't get a lot of, I didn't get a ton of feedback and it just, it, well, it's also, it was a busy week. It's also a busy week for a lot of people. You know, this is also. It's spring break. It's spring break. It's South by week. It's, stuff is going on. Yeah. But so. Officer Down's out on DVD, I believe. I should get a copy. Kyle, uh, that was last week's episode. Kyle had scored that. Mm-hmm. Which is really super cool. I scored a film. Well, I produced a film. Mm -hmm. I've scored a couple of films, mostly shorts, but I scored Thunder Wake as well as producing it, and that was a feature. And I know what kind of work goes into that. That was a serious chunk of his life. So I wish him the best. He also told me he's ready to sell me the 238, which means I'm putting the Tascam 680 up, 60, 688 up for sale. Yes. Uh, 600 bucks. 600 bucks. If we have to ship it somewhere, it will be more. Because <laughs> it is not a light piece of equipment. No. As long as it's continental U.S., I'll ship it for 600 Okay. Because Kyle sold it. That's what Kyle shipped it to me for 600 Oh, ah, okay. And the the machine he's selling me is a little less. So gotcha. I'm, not, I'm not having to come out of pocket to trade them off. Gotcha. Um. But I really love the crap out of the 688. It's just a good machine. We All the Freeform Fridays so far this year have been recorded on it. Uh, the next batch will, will be the Zoom, which will be an interesting comparison. Mm -hmm. Right? Digital to analog. 
And yeah. And also we do have a manual for the 688. We do. It's around somewhere. Yeah, I think it's There it is. Next yeah. to Regal Cat. <laughs> um and you definitely need a manual for this thing. Now granted mm-hmm. there's PDFs of it everywhere, but the really nice thing on the 688 is the belt is almost brand new. So it's is very it? yeah, okay. so it's very reliable. Um, and it'll continue to be reliable for a very long time. Mm-hmm. And on that note, 